The views and opinions expressed on this podcast is solely of the creator and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of the listener. Listener discretion is advised. Also, chat GPT and AI bots were not used or harmed in the creation of this podcast. Hi, and welcome back to Under the Moon Paranormal Ohio Legends. If you're new here, my name's Melanie, and I'm a paranormal enthusiast, and I've been hunting ghosts since about 14 years, give or take. I've been all over Ohio, including Post Town Elementary. I do YouTube stuff with uh, graveyards. I show people how to restore headstones and uh, talk to spirits that may have not been talking to in a long time. So, I have a paranormal group called Under the Moon Paranormal. It's why I started this podcast, because I love the history of Ohio and the spooky things tied into the history. If you joined us last month in December, we had a haunted school in Post Town, Ohio, called Post Town Elementary. Uh, If you are not familiar with that, go look it up, get familiar, come back, because this is the tale of two haunted schools. So, this month in January, we're going to talk about the January wolf moon before we get into today's episode. During the heart of winter, the wolf moon appears, indicating a time of stillness and profound self-reflection. The wolf moon is believed to symbolize the power and strength of wolves which are often associated with intuition, loyalty, and a strong connection to nature. Peaking in the sign of the fiery Leo, this year's wolf moon brings strong themes of self-love and self-validation. It is a time of boldness, playfulness, creativity, and self-expression. Spirituality, the January 2024 wolf moon pushes you to live deeper in your truth, giving you the courage to try new things, and step outside your comfort zone as you prepare to embark on a 12-month journey. As 2024's first full moon, the wolf moon is the ideal time to clarify your goals and intentions for the new year. In astrology, full moons represent a time of fulfillment. It is a time when emotions and intuitions are in heightened and you can see things more clearly. On Thursday, January 25th, 2024, at precisely 12.45 p.m., the wolf moon will peak in the sun-ruled Leo, a heart-centered fire sign known for its playful, outgoing energy and gentle fierceness. While full moons are known for stirring up drama and intense feelings, The full moon in January wolf moon is all about challenging yourself to let go of repressed fears and insecurities limiting your potentials. Because brave Leo is associated with the ego, the heart, the wolf moon is also a time of compassion, generosity, empowerment, selfishness, and greed. Events impacting your creativity and self-expression that occurred during last year's Leo new moon may bring full circle moments now. Significant announcements may also arise in Leo-related industries such as music, sports, the arts, and entertainment. To work with this energy, dig deeper into your desires and be willing to make the necessary changes to bring more joy, passion, and happiness in your relationships, professional life, and daily routines. 
This is especially important if you have frequently decided to fit, uh, please others rather than doing what's best for yourself. So self-love is all about what this moon's about. All right, so let's get into today's episode. Defiance is the city in Defiance County, Ohio, United States. It's about 55 miles southwest of Toledo and 45 miles northeast of Fort Wayne, Indiana. In Ohio's northwestern corner, the population in 2020 was about 17,000 people. A little bit of history. The city contains the sites of Fort Defiance, built by General Mad Anthony Wayne in August of 1794. During the Northwest Indian War at the confluence of the Agulhas and Maumee Rivers, which Maumee, it's like spelled like M-A-U-M-E-E, General Wayne surveyed the land and declared that General Scott, I defy the English Indians and all the devils of hell to take it. Using the fort as a base of operations, Wayne ordered his troops to destroy the Native American crops and villages within the radius of 50 miles around the fort. Today, a pair of cannons outside of the city library on the Maumee River overlook the confluence and mark the location for Fort Defiance, along with mounted outline of the fort walls. The city was named after Fort Defiance. So... In 1822, Defiance was laid out as a town and in 1845 was made the county seat of the newly created county. And in 1881, it became a city. So a little bit more about that Northwest Indian War. Oh, sorry. It was called the Battle of Ohio redirects here okay not to be confused with the battle of ohio the nickname for both bengals browns rivalry thing okay so the northwest indian war from 1785 to 1795 also known by other names uh, was armed conflict for control of the northwest territory fought between the united states and a group of native american nations known today as the northwest confederacy the United States Army considers the first American Indian Wars. Okay, so the, you know, from past episodes, like the Ross County episode, uh, Ohio was a vast trading spot for the Indians, Native Americans, the indigenous people. Um, and a lot of bad things happened in Ohio for these uh, territories and, you know, for America to be established. Ohio uh, just wasn't a great place to be for Native Americans at that time. So, this school, the old junior high school in Defiance, Ohio, is what we're going to be focusing today's episode on. So, that was a little bit of history about the land of where this place was built, of course. So when I was doing research for this episode, I discovered that the school was actually torn down in 2023. Um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with a, t- a TV show on travel and Destination America called Destination Fear. Uh, Dakota Layden, his sister, and his two best friends went to this school before it was torn down and they caught some really amazing evidence of- with this janitor. They also told a few stories, so we're going to get into everything that was broke down in the episode. The Defiance Junior High School is the most haunted high school in Ohio. It is better known as School Spirit. It has been vacant since 2018. Many paranormal people have Uh, her jingling keys in a music box in the school. The Defiance City Schools building, situated at the intersection of Arabella and Clinton Streets, was once the district high school. 
when it was constructed in 1918. The junior high school was replaced by a new high school in 1970. The 1918 building and the former Defiance Junior High School are used to refer to it. Currently, the school system plans to demolish it, which they have since, uh, and preservations are working to halt their plans. Preservationists are halting it, but they didn't. They demolished it. We are all, we all remember the happier times in the high school being the homecoming queen, said in this quote, taking clubs that will venture out into our life or career choice, that's school life. We had an adventure in the school. So, end quote. This school was abandoned and closed in 2018. The city wanted to destroy and make it into apartments or a park. They did not wish evil to be attached to it. In 1902, two football players hit each other on the field. Because their helmets were leather, they were not protected. In 1918, the school's valedictorian was found dead near Lake Powell. Another person's body was found a few years later in the same lake in 1921. So I tried to look for those incidents and I did find the Valley Victorian, a, an article about her passing away, uh, but I did not find anything about the football players at all. So the only evil attached, or they say he's evil, is Mr. John Maul, the janitor, and the teacher, which they don't have a name for this teacher. First, the teacher and the janitor took children into the basement and blood bloodily murdered them. I don't think they actually murdered them, though. I think they just punished them really bad. Um, the teacher took the janitor and murdered him when he was, like, not wanting to do this anymore. And threw the body near the train tracks. And the train decapitated the body. Eventually, it was true, the teacher was sentenced to life in prison and died in prison. The school superintendent knew about all this when the other children told him what their teacher was doing. Their friend would not come back, the kids would say. So, I think that John Maul was told to do this by the teacher and superintendent. Because they are not named in the article. But the article, which I will attach, it's kind of hard to read because it's really old, it's really tiny, and when you, you know, zoom in, it just gets blurry. So I'll attach that on his find a grave. So the article is really interesting because he was stabbed before he was thrown on the train tracks. The train decapitated him. Pretty sad. But yeah, it doesn't have any mention of the name of the superintendent or the teacher. Okay. This is another quote from a paranormal investigator. Many paranormal teams have had terrifying nights. Some investigators have left, uh, have felt someone watching them, which can make them feel very uncomfortable. The banging of the lockers could terrify anyone. The basement light came on in one incident and the investigators could not find the light switch nearby. And some could hear the jangling of keys. And who could it be? Could it be the janitor? Well, that's kind of what you would think, you know, because it did sound like keys jingling if you saw the episode that we're talking about here. This is one of the most terrifying nights for our paranormal investigators to witness firsthand in a big creepy school, which looked like it came from a horror movie. Hmm. Very, very interesting. So again, I'm going to attach the find a grave for John Mole. His headstone's really small. Um, just says Father John H. Mall, 1833 to 1891. And then it has a headline that says Suicide or Murder, Melancholy Ending for an Unfortunate Affair. So there's an affair mentioned there. Mm -hmm. It has about seven pages of this article. Janitor Mall's death is the other headline after it was investigated. And then there's funeral notice. <clears throat> the funeral of John H. Mall will occur from his home on Upper Clinton Street tomorrow afternoon at 3 o'clock. Reverend B. W. Slangle is officiating. The remains will be buried in Riverside Cemetery. The deceased was 58 years of age and leaves a wife and six children. 
So I'm kind of interested to go find Riverside Cemetery, find John Mall, and sit down and talk with him. Because you can't go to the school anymore. The school is gone. So let's talk about some similarities between Post Town and the Defiance Junior High School. And I'm going to attach a picture of the junior high school before it was torn down. And last month's thumbnail is the picture of Post Town Elementary. This, the building styles are exactly the same. Like the front doors look exactly the same. Also, they are both by rivers and train tracks, coincidentally. But there was no train derailments or crashes near the Old Defiance Junior High School, except for the accident with John Mall. <clears throat> and the stories of janitors. As I mentioned in Post Town, they had a janitor that had a house fire and passed away. And he still clocks in for a shift. <clears throat> So that concludes the tale of two haunted schools. What'd you guys think? There really wasn't much history on the Old Defiance Junior High School itself, but there's this really interesting stuff about John Mall. Really, really interesting. And go look up the episode for Destination Fear um, about the Old Junior, not uh, the Defiance Junior High School. So we're gonna go into the Shout Clout there is a new restaurant alert here in Greenfield. It is called the Angry Cactus, and um, it's right here in Highland County. It's like a Chipotle style type restaurant. Um, it's getting a lot of a lot of reviews that are amazing. Look them up on Facebook for their hours of operation and their menu. All right. So, to now we go to our listener-submitted story. I have one for you. This is from Paul in New Zealand. The subject was the dangers of paranormal hunting. Before I became a skeptic, me and my buddies explored our city's oldest cemeteries in New Zealand, Barbados Street. It was the oldest where it was said the pilgrims of our city walked at night. As we walked through calling out names we could read on the stones, doing the thing to arouse the long dead from their slumber, I dashed ahead where I could just see the sunken grave. This means the coffin has rotted away and collapsed. So I lay down in the depression quite deep actually and waited for them to catch up. I planned to leap up and scare the crap out of them and I waited and waited as they dallied reading gravestones. Then I felt awfully cold, and I mean bad, it felt like icy hands grasping my body while I leapt up, shaking, and they just stared. What's wrong, they uttered. I shook it off, feeling stupid. I had just scared myself horribly and read this stone. An old man was buried there around 1856 or so. I've never disrespected the Paul, like, disrespected the dead like that again. Paul. Well, that's really, really spooky. But yeah, don't be uh, going out there and purposely trying to make fun of the dead. You know, so I guess that would be a reason for them to spook you. Just uh, be careful out there. Just don't try to invite anything that you don't want to take home with you. So, that concludes this month's episode of Under the Moon Paranormal Ohio Legends. I hope you guys really did enjoy this story because I did a lot of research for this junior high school that, that just wasn't there. So, if you have your own spooky story that you want to submit, email me at underthemoonparapod at gmail.com. And also, we're not going to be doing teaser episodes anymore on the new moon 
because now I can upload these episodes to my YouTube. And the teaser episodes are just really small, and I kind of always forget to do them. So, <laughs> hey, shift and eight easy. Ain't that right? So, just check us out on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and search Under the Moon Paranormal, or just follow the link tree that's in the description of the show. And always remember to stay spooky, my friends. Thanks for listening. Make sure to join us under the next full moon for the next spooky tale of Under the Moon Ohio Paranormal Legends.